Hello, welcome to another week's video where we are going to cover the topic of New Year's resolutions. Personally, I don't set New Year's resolutions. The main reason being that they never work. I tend to bring in changes into my life whenever I feel that they are needed rather than waiting for a specific day. But I used to be an avid setter of New Year's resolutions. And obviously I've watched this over years and years with coaching clients and really examined why they don't work. So unfortunately, just because we want a certain pattern or behavior to go away doesn't mean that it's just going to do so. And especially just because we decided. Now patterns are way more complex than that. So that is what I'm gonna cover in this video and I'm gonna offer you a better, more effective solution to try instead. So let's start with why New Year's resolutions don't work. In short, it is because we are highly programmable, habitual beings. We operate unconsciously and most of that programming has been laid down in earlier life. So basically we are a sum of like everything that we have experienced up until this point of our life. So if you're 50 years old, that's 50 years of life experience. If you're 19 years old, that's only 19 years of lived experience. So the older you are, the harder it can sometimes be to start new habits, but either way, everybody can do it. Once you understand what's going on. Okay, so all of our habits are ingrained in us. So we can choose to change, but without the right approach, the body's just going to lean right back into wherever it was in the beginning. So let's take a New Year's resolution like, I will never drink alcohol again as an example. So you set the intention of doing that. You then go to parties or you then have some type of plan where you're not going to drink any alcohol, for example, for the year of 2023. So you're just tired of being that person that constantly leans on drinking and you wanna have more health and more self-control. So 1st of January passes, great job. You probably woke up with a hangover because you probably had your last drinks on the 31st of December, but that's okay because on the 1st of January, January, you are not going to drink any more. Okay, so that day passes, good job. The next day passes, good job. Maybe the 3rd of January passes, you're still on track, but you're probably starting to feel a little bit anxious by now. You're starting to not feel as good and you're starting to not feel as strong. So then let's just say Saturday rolls around, your friends are going out to dinner, you're joining them, your normal behavior with these people is to drink. And after a couple of hours at the dinner, eventually your habitual self that desire to drink, whether it's to be to fit in or whether it's to be to relax or whether it's just because you enjoy it, whatever the reason is, that is going to take over at some point. And sometimes you just do it without thinking and other times it comes with this whole bunch of like justification. So you might say, oh, it's just this one. Actually, I'll change my goal to every Saturday I'll have a drink and every other day I won't. Or, you know, actually, maybe it's not that bad. Oh no, wait, maybe I'll actually quit this instead of the alcohol because that actually aligns more with my goals. So you'll start this weird like rationalization thing that comes from the inside out, which is your body's way of steering you back down into that habitual behavior. So then you start drinking and you've ruined your news resolution. Now you're disappointed in yourself. Now you think you're a failure. And now you're like, well, I'm only one week into the new year and I haven't achieved my goal. So I'll just wait till the next new year. <laughs> You know, so that's how it often plays out. And you may be wondering why the hell you can't get it right. So in this kind of situation, it's because the removal of that alcohol has left you feeling unsafe. So it's left you in a space where you're probably stuck in your emotions, which you have not been processing, or maybe you don't have the tools or the skills to process them, and you're using alcohol as a buffer. And this is a totally normal Australian thing to do. It's very culturally acceptable, actually. Work from Monday to Thursday, be as healthy as possible, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all things go out the window, drinking, eating crap, and starting on Monday fresh again. So you might be able to see now that unless you actually deal with the emotion that is driving the behavior, it's gonna be very hard for your New Year's resolution to stick, or any goal for that matter. So the key to understand just to start with is that your emotions are driving your choices, and they are more powerful than your cognitive decision to change. Okay, so what is the solution? So the first and most powerful way that you can deal with something like this and create positive change in your life is to deal with the emotions head on. But that is outside of my scope of practice. So I'm gonna suggest a method that you can start right now, which is much more practical than setting a new year's resolution. So I recommend that you choose a theme or a statement or a generalized goal of something you would like to have more of in your life instead of a specific resolution or behavioral change. 
So in the video, I'm just going to nut out how this might work and how you can apply it into your life for 2023 so that you have a really clear focus of what it is that you want to achieve. And it will also mitigate that feeling of failure because that's what you want to get rid of. You don't want to be pursuing a healthy lifestyle with this fear that if you don't do it perfectly, that you're actually not a good person because by triggering those deeper internal messages about not being good enough, about not being disciplined enough, you know, these are all going to hinder you from improving the quality of your life. And none of us want to feel those. And so let's start with the first step, which is to choose your theme. So it's like a blanket statement, kind of written as a commitment to yourself. It can just be a word. It could be three words, whatever it is that feels right for you in this moment. Something that feels like if I had more of this or if I approach my life in this way, my life is going to improve. I'm going to achieve the goals that I want to achieve in the long term. Examples might include I'm going to find two separate things that add joy to my life this year. I commit to taking good care of myself. I commit to finding a new career path. Let's just say you've been feeling unhappy in your job for the last five or six years. You know, maybe your theme or your goal for this year is just to find a new path that resonates for you. It doesn't matter what that path is, it's just to find one. You know, or I want to educate myself more about self-love. I want to build more confidence from the inside out. I want to make more friendships with people that are like, you know, A, B or C, like what kind of relational things do you want to bring into your life? I commit to embracing all parts of myself without fear. You know, this kind of thing. I'll tell you what mine is for 2023 and I will keep referring back to that as we work through the steps because it will help you kind of understand how it works and how vague it can really be. So mine is something that I learned this year, which was safety. So in my trauma healing process, I am learning that I need to embrace more safety in my life. At the start of the year, I had zero clue what that was. I did have some safety, but I wasn't actually aware that there was any difference between that and the other stuff that I had. So that's my theme for 2023 is to continue to lean into safety. And this is exactly what my psychologist and my somatic therapist have suggested that I do ever since I met them in April. And it finally clicked for me that this is actually the most important thing that I need right now. And then the beauty of a goal like safety is that because it improves the quality of the life overall and it helps me really relax my nervous system and really lean into life in a more joyful kind of free way, it's actually going to help with any behavioral changes that I want to make as well. So that is mine. And if you're overthinking it, just think of whatever it is that bugs you the most about yourself and your life right now. You know, goals can totally morph and change. You might find that you only have to dedicate like January and February to whatever it is that you choose, but then your life's already going to be better and maybe you morph into a new theme or a new goal as the year goes on. Maybe you refine it, maybe you expand it. It doesn't matter. The point is that it is a fluid way of approaching your personal development and you're not putting constraints on it or setting yourself up for failure. So then once you have your theme and take your time working out what that would be, you want to do the second step, which is to identify the why behind why you chose that theme. So as an example, I'm going to use a theme like I commit to taking good care of myself as an example why do you want to do that you know is it because you feel unhappy is it because you always feel anxious is it because you constantly tolerate toxic behavior from people like what is the emotional driver behind why you want to take better care of yourself without identifying an emotional driver it's very hard to get momentum towards a goal because at the end of the day, we're emotional beings and that tends to be what we are driven by. So identify that emotion. For me personally, back to that safety example, my emotional driver is to feel more joy and freedom in my life, which is something I've wanted since as long as I can remember. Because in the absence of safety, we have pain and suffering and I don't want to experience much more of that if I can avoid it. So then we have step three, and that is just to have a little bit of a look at all the ways in which you are not doing whatever this goal or theme is. If it is to take better care of yourself, in what ways are you not doing that? You know, are you engaging in toxic behavior? Are you working a job you absolutely hate? Do you not have enough time to spend with your kids and you're constantly beating yourself up about it? Do you constantly buy takeaway? Do you constantly drink alcohol and then feel terrible after? Do you constantly skip the gym even though when you go you feel better than ever? Like, you know, what are all the ways in which you are sabotaging your goals and your life? Like, write them all down. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just having a look at all these things so that you can kind of get a little bit of direction. And a lot of us are, you know, more mental beings. So we do actually need to kind of really unpack things in order to get clarity around them. But if you take a little bit of time to do this, I guarantee you it'll be much easier to move forward. And to get back to mine being the safety piece is that I need to be mindful of where I pour my energy into because I tend to pour it in 
everywhere until I'm depleted, but I don't make sure that I'm pouring it into things that are going to give me back the same amount of energy. You know, so sometimes I overwork, sometimes I overextend myself for people that don't appreciate me. These aren't things that are going to build safety, they're not going to build joy, and they're not going to build freedom in my life. But it's absolutely a habit that is associated with my lack of safety that I need to fix. And then if you want to continue with the process, then you are going to step four, and that is to list down all the ways in which you could bring this theme to life. So back to the taking better care of yourself. If you're leaning on takeaway all the time, could you purchase, say, ready-made meals that are actually healthy? So not things like lasagna, things like chicken, potato, or chicken and rice, or chicken and veg. That way you still have quick grab meals, but they're actually in line with feeling healthier. Maybe you want to engage with a health practitioner. Maybe you want to find a psychologist or a counselor or a naturopath or someone that can help steer you in the direction of taking better care of yourself. Because maybe you lack education in a way. Maybe you lack guidance and support. Maybe you're not really sure what you should be doing. And taking better care of yourself, maybe you need to have better friendships, better relationships, things like that. So start framing out what it would look like. I personally, I just love to mind map. I just write in the middle what it is that I'm reflecting on. And I just write down all around it, whatever comes to mind, you know? And then often when you start, a lot of people say like, I don't know, I can't think of anything. Like you can, you just have to start with something and then you come up with something else off that and then something else off that and something else off that and you just keep going and going and going. So really take the time to reflect on what it looks like. And remembering that because it is a theme, it may morph, it may change, it's fluid. It does not have to stay like this for the entire year. There are no rules here. This is why we're not doing something like I will quit alcohol because it's really not very inspiring. And if you think about that, do you feel like you expand when you think about I will not do such and such? Or do you feel like you expand when you're like, I will focus on my health? You know, like which one feels more expansive to you? That's what you want to think of. And then lastly, you just want to have a look about whether you think you're being realistic or not, because let's be honest, you cannot change your entire life in 12 months. A lot of things can change, but usually that happens as a result of many, many steps along the way before that. If you're new to personal development and you've never really explored the idea of changing your life, you're not going to achieve it all in one year. All you're really going to do is probably unearth a little bit of dysfunction, bring in a couple of newer habits, or inspire yourself by being quite diligent in a way over the 12 months and then actually feeling what it feels like to be healthy. You know, and that might actually be the driver for 2024's goals, which might be to enhance your health even further. You know, so make sure it's realistic. Don't be too crazy. Like you should be able to look at whatever it is that you've come up with and think I can totally lean into that, you know, and it's not going to take every single day of your life. You, know, you want to be able to have a look at what you've put together and think like, I can definitely lean into that. I have the energy, I have the time, I have the focus, I'm ready and I'm excited and I know why I'm doing it. Okay, so that's it. That's pretty much what I recommend for New Year's resolutions to create a theme or a statement that can last throughout the year. And the reason it works is because it is fluid. It can change all the time. There's no failure. It's expected that, you know, sometimes for weeks at a time, you'll totally forget you even had a theme. You know, like I fall into the unsafety trap for weeks on end. And then I'm like, whoopsies, I forgot I was supposed to focus on the safety. But, I just, but because it's just a theme, it doesn't matter. I didn't fail. I'm focusing on safety just because I lost focus. Doesn't mean I'm a failure. It just means I slipped into a habitual pattern from the past, which is what my body does unconsciously from my early life programming. But then now that I've identified that I forgot about the safety, I can then lean back into that. And if I keep doing that throughout the year, by the end of the year, I'm going to be all over it. And the same goes for you. If you take a light approach to your goals in this way, there's really no failing. And you want to take the failure piece out in order to stay consistent in the long term. And it also works because you can just do it in bite-sized chunks. If your goal is to be healthier, you might just start with having a little bit less coffee. You might just start by adding breakfast. It can look like anything. You don't have to do all of the habits at once. You know, you're not trying to overhaul everything you're just trying to do a thing so you've got 12 months to do that and it can look however you want it to look and the last reason why it works is because it is adaptable and you can just keep changing it however it is that you need to change it so if you realize you've overdone it and you've kind of overcommitted to something you can pull it back you're still not failing so just remembering all the time you can't fail you're just trying to move forward any goal setting process involves a little bit of leaning into it and a little bit of forgetting about it and all of that good stuff so there's no perfect way you can do it. And okay, so stop thinking that you can just bring something in and just go cold turkey. Stop thinking you can get rid of your crutches, like your survival habits, because you can't. So focus from the ground up, come up with a theme, come up with a statement, 
take it through those steps and I bet your 2023 will be a lot brighter and more successful if you take that approach rather than the old approach. So that's it for this week's video. I will see you next week, which will be in 2023.